It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. A wake-up call. The world needs to prepare for massive crop failure. That's a headline this week from Gizmodo.com. That doesn't sound good, does it? Many other sources also covering that same report. The report continues, food producing regions of the world will see significantly lower crop yields in the near future. Yes, part of the plan. The systematic weather decimation of already struggling agricultural regions. In the words of Lyndon Johnson, in 1962, 61 years ago, he who controls the weather controls the world. Next headline, WHO, World Health Organization, warns of imminent, quote, extreme weather events, end quote. That's from PressUnited.com and other international sources. The international body, the World Health Organization, predicts a major uptick in droughts, floods, hurricanes, and other, quote, natural disasters. Let's stop there. Can this be called a quote prediction, when climate engineering operations are inseparable from this equation and not being disclosed to populations by any official source for obvious reasons. New from Fox News, White House report signals openness to manipulating sunlight to prevent climate change. Yes, let's all keep pretending that so-called solar radiation management operations haven't already been raging in skies all over the world for decades with catastrophic consequences. More on that headline in a moment. Next from phys.org. Out of time. That's the headline. Temperature records topple around the world. Here's an example. The hottest day ever recorded on Earth happened on Monday, July 3rd of this week. How long will this record stand? It's already been broken. The very next day, July 4th. A new hottest day ever recorded. Wildfires are raging not only in Canada, but also Siberia. Tens of millions of acres. Earth's last remaining life support systems going up in smoke. How do the incinerations serve the controllers and the climate engineers? Search this geoengineeringwatch.org report title to learn what most would rather not know. Wildfires serve geoengineering agenda, one of our most important reports. If the masses can be fully awakened to what their governments have done to them from the skies above, without their knowledge or consent, waging weather warfare with highly toxic elements and manipulating those elements with extremely powerful and highly damaging frequency transmissions from installations like HARP in Alaska, one of many all over the world, what will those populations do? if they only knew. Awakening the masses is the great imperative of this final hour. This effort desperately needs the participation of all who are already awake. The U.S. matrix media remains silent on the cascading collapse of Earth's life support systems. Matrix media is a never-ending scripted political theater of mass distraction, division, and polarization. That's what matrix media peddles to populations that are sadly all too willing in too many cases to take the bait. Normalcy bias and Stockholm syndrome, both epidemics of a willfully eyes wide shut mentality in too much of the population. And for those that still feel safe and secure with their stock market Ponzi scheme portfolios, the house of cards will soon fall, wait and see. Soon, very soon, the only commodities that will matter are what you can eat, drink, and shelter with, all of which will be very precarious to hang on to when Mad Max mentality erupts in the ranks of the starving masses. Let's press on. More bad news. El Nino officially declared a weather emergency. That's from MSN.com. Let's add more to that equation from AccuWeather. Heat dome to challenge record highs in northwestern U.S. beyond 4th of July. And yes, there it is again. Another ionosphere heater-induced high-pressure heat dome, a term that was unknown not so many years ago, is now a factor that's mentioned in every heat wave that occurs. Am I saying that there wouldn't be heat waves without climate engineering operations? No, I'm not saying that. 
What I'm saying is that when weather terrorists are completely manipulating and derailing an already highly damaged climate system, nothing can be considered natural weather. And if this level of manipulation continues unabated, we will not long be on this now dying planet. And to those that don't believe that such a conclusion is even possible, coming events will soon enough cause you to take pause and hopefully to rethink your perception of reality. But aside from what's coming, let's stop and consider what is right now, today. We have lost over 65% of Earth's original forest cover. Global pelagic fish populations, the food fish, down 90%. Insect populations down 80 to 90%, terrestrial and aquatic. Earth's life-sustaining ozone layer is disintegrating by the day with climate engineering and all that it entails, not just the atmospheric dispersions of toxic nanoparticles, but also the manipulation of those particles with frequency transmissions, all of that adding up to a disintegrating ozone layer. Wildlife decline. We have officially lost 70% of Earth's wildlife populations in the last 40 years. The actual figures are more startling still. We face the zero hour for no functional wildlife populations left on planet Earth on the current trajectory by 2026. Plankton populations down 90% in the Atlantic based on peer-reviewed study. Other oceans not far behind. No plankton, no people. That's very, very clear. Here's a quick rundown for those that are new to this broadcast, since we're on 23 stations around the country. Oceans die. We die. Wildlife dies. We die. Plankton dies. We die. Insects die. We die. Forests disappear. We die. Ozone layer collapses. We die. All of it's happening at once. We collectively face near-term omnicide, while far too many continue to tell themselves that it's all going to magically get better if they can just get their candidate elected in the next round of the scripted political circus in the so-called land of the free and home of the brave. The majority of whom are either actively or passively supporting the matrix itself, and by doing so, the criminally insane controllers behind it all. The host from an on-air radio interview I did this week asked me if I was feeling patriotic for the 4th of July. Here's my answer. Patriotic toward what? The total matrix control and censorship of any information, no matter how valid and verifiable, that disputes the official narrative? I continued with asking the host if I should feel patriotic about being sprayed like a lab rat with toxic climate engineering elements by our country's own military. Weather and biological warfare from which there is no escape. And then there's the U.S. Empire's behavior abroad. Invading, occupying, looting, plundering, pillaging, and polluting other nations for the resources the empire desperately needs to survive under the guise of spreading, quote, freedom and democracy at the point of a gun. Summary, no, I feel absolutely no patriotism toward a matrix-controlled criminal cabal that's currently engaged not only in all that I just mentioned, but also neck deep in thinning the herd the very citizens that they claim to be representing, protecting, and caring for. What a travesty of total tyranny it all is. So, is the definition of patriotism to blindly wave a flag without having a clue what that flag now represents? Or, is real patriotism something else altogether? Mark Twain said it best, quote, In the beginning of change, the patriot is brave and scarce, Hated and scorned, but in the end, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him, for then it costs nothing to be a patriot. So here's my question. Who are the true patriots and who are not? I'll let the listener decide for themselves. Moving on, back to the systematic targeting of agricultural producing regions. Here's the title of a just published on 4th of July a science study from Nature.com titled Risks of Synchronized Low Yields Are Underestimated in Climate and Crop Model Projections. Let's look at this report. It states this, Simultaneous harvest failures across major crop producing regions are a threat to global food security. They continue, Concurrent weather extremes driven by a strongly meandering jet stream could trigger such events. Negative effects on crop responses are mostly underestimated in bias-adjusted simulations. Let's translate all of this. Climate engineering can and does manipulate upper-level 
pressure zones, thus upper level wind currents, thus precipitation patterns. And in regard to the underestimation of how bad it is, that's across the board. Geoengineeringwatch.org has stated that from the beginning of our existence. It's not as bad as we're being told. It's exponentially worse than we're being told. And why is that? Because they don't want to panic populations until the last possible moment. How clear can that be at this point? They want to feed the normalcy bias until we hit the wall at full velocity. This new science report continues with this. Extremes occurring in close temporal vicinity can lead to outsized social impacts. What's that mean? It means when there's not enough food in the shelf, Mad Max scenarios erupt. They continue often beyond the sum of each extreme occurring in isolation. In particular, they say, synchronized crop failures due to simultaneous weather extremes across multiple breadbasket regions pose a risk to global food security and food system supply chains, with potential disproportional impacts for import-dependent regions. Obviously, those that can't grow their own food are going to be in the worst situation of all. The new Nature.com report then continues with this. The occurrence of one or more wave events in summer elevates the likelihood of poor harvest. To quantify, they say, the effect of wave events on concurrent poor yields can create what is known as the likelihood manipulation factor that they coin LMF. Yes, just put an acronym on it and that legitimizes whatever scenario they are manipulating. Concurrent crop failures, the report continues, in major crop producing regions constitute a systemic risk as associated spikes in food prices can lead to conflict and undernutrition. Evidence for high risk blind spots such as an underestimation of synchronized harvest failures as identified in this report, manifests the urgency of rapid emission reductions, lest climate extremes and their complex interactions might increasingly become unmanageable. As if they're not already? And climate engineering, of course, never mentioned in any report like this. And when they state unimaginable, no. Omnicidal, yes. The vast majority of the human race, by design, doesn't understand the exponential function. By the intentional programming of the matrix controllers, populations don't understand or even try to understand how exponential the converging catastrophes are that are closing in on all of us from every side. Ongoing weather warfare is further fueling an already unimaginably dire global ecological collapse scenario. So again I ask, how can there be any legitimate discussion of climate anything from any perspective? without first and foremost addressing the ongoing climate intervention operations? Answer, there can't be. The climate engineering issue must be core to any discussion of the climate or weather, or the discussion is a lie by omission. Buckle up, we're in for a ride. Far worse than almost any yet dare to imagine. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the end of the world as we know it broadcast, commercial-free, non-political, and covering the most dire and immediate threats we collectively face. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of covert climate engineering operations. If you want to strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue with those around you, check the activist materials section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Shirts, hoodies, and super effective printed materials that we pass on for less than our cost of producing and shipping. Make your voice heard. Make every day count. Moving on. Wildfire smoke from Canada making its return to the northern U.S. That headline was from AccuWeather.com this week. They continue, less than a week after the last round of wildfire smoke blotted out the skies of the Midwest and Northeast, parts of the U.S. could once again see air quality levels decline. Can't have a population breathing any clean air, can we? The fires that are raging from Canada to Siberia are already catastrophic, and the burning season has only just begun. And for those that are trying to convince themselves that it's all just nature behaving poorly, think again. Please Please investigate. Start with searching this very important report title, Wildfires Serve Geoengineering Agenda, one of our most important short videos from geoengineeringwatch.org. 
In spite of the shockingly inarguable decimation that industrialized militarized society has inflicted on our once formerly thriving biosphere, there are still far too many trying to convince themselves that all the Earth changes happening at a pace which is exponentially faster than any previous mass extinction event are just the result of unalterable cyclical patterns having nothing to do with countless forms of human activity with climate engineering being at the top of that list. Question, is any such conclusion reasonable, rational, logical? Again, this example, if a body was found in the street that had been run over, shot, stabbed, beaten, and burned, and someone tried to make the claim that this individual died of completely natural causes, would you, should you, believe such a claim? Bottom line, Anyone that in any way addresses the current unprecedented earth changes without mentioning and accounting for the countless forms of human activity that have decimated earth and its former energy balance is either clueless or lying. Take your pick. We must all learn to be discerning. For the record, statisticians have calculated the mathematical odds of all the earth changes that are occurring in complete lockstep with human activities, which have inarguable consequences as being natural or not. Their math-based conclusions, this, the possibility that the imploding life support systems of the planet are anything other than anthropogenically caused, i.e. human caused, is a statistical zero. The scientific principle of Occam's razor provides a compass heading for this conclusion. Moving on from Forbes.com, July 4th was Earth's hottest day in over 100,000 years, breaking record for second day in a row. From that report, again from Forbes, the 4th of July was the hottest day on Earth in as many as 125,000 years, breaking the record set just the day before. Climate scientist Frederick Otto of the Grantham Institute for Climate Change and the Environment at Britain's Imperial College in London told Reuters, quote, it's a death sentence for people and ecosystems, end quote. Climate scientists say the extreme heat we are experiencing is just the beginning of what's to come. Question, is the superheating of the planet actually this bad? No. No, it's even worse than this. Far worse. With completely out of control climate engineering operations further fueling the overall fire, short term highly toxic surface cooldowns at the cost of an even worse warming, and then the incredibly desperate acts like setting the template for wildfires to burn in northern latitude forests with unimaginable ferocity as a form of climate engineering, as a form of artificial volcano to fill the atmosphere with enough particulate matter to provide temporary cooling over certain regions to pacify populations and also. Perhaps very conveniently for the controllers to sicken those populations, providing cover for whatever they want to spray on top of that smoke canopy. And we know they are. Been over this broadcast after broadcast. We have film footage, time-lapse film footage of blanket aerosol spraying on top of smoke canopies like the Paradise Fire. Search and view the dimming documentary. See it for yourself. Next from foxnews.com. White House Report signals openness to manipulating sunlight to prevent climate change. Much of what I just outlined a moment ago. Solar radiation modification offers, they say, the possibility of cooling the planet significantly on a time scale of a few years. That's what the report claims. Let's go further in this report. A research document published on the White House website reveals the Biden administration is open to studying how to block sunlight to save Earth from climate change. They continue, the congressionally mandated report released by the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy shows that the team has been researching geoengineering methods to keep the sun's rays from accelerating global warming. As the University of Oxford notes in its entry on the subject, geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale intervention in Earth's natural systems to counteract climate change. How's that going so far after 75 years of these programs and pretending they could may might to pull them someday? They continue, according to the report titled Congressionally Mandated Report on Solar Radiation Modification, not surprisingly, the types of geoengineering methods the Biden administration is looking into are stratospheric aerosol injection, SAI, and marine cloud brightening, which is more of the same. What is SAI for those that don't know? Solar radiation management, again, spraying light scattering particles into the sky 
to block some of the sun's incoming thermal energy. And most of it is not being done in the stratosphere. It's being done in the troposphere, the lowest layer of the atmosphere. Although the stratosphere reaches lower levels in the polar regions, and they are certainly operating in the stratosphere there. It can be as low as 23,000 feet. So that's all semantics at this point, troposphere, stratosphere. Bottom line is anyone who's not clinically blind can see jet aircraft spraying dispersions in the skies that are not condensation. Film footage proves this beyond any shadow of a doubt that these particles are being dispersed through nozzles. We have up close film footage of these aircraft, nozzles visible, turning on and off. We've tested this material at great effort and expense at geoengineeringwatch.org. Again, all filmed with the dimming documentary. We're not guessing. Here's a final excerpt from this Fox News report, again titled White House Report Signals Openness to Manipulating Sunlight to Prevent Climate Change. And this final excerpt, the document did acknowledge that it could pave the way for future government or corporate projects in this field. How long can this elephant in the sky go unacknowledged, pretending that it's really not there. Tech to the rescue again. Question, how's that going so far? Over 75 years of these programs, first deployed immediately after World War II, beta testing going on in World War II. We have film footage of the bombers to prove it, shutting their dispersions on and off. They would have had to beta test during World War II to do this. They also launched... Two years after World War II in 1947, Project Cirrus, the manipulation of hurricanes, how good are they at that by this point in time? And even with all the historical data of weather warfare being waged on other countries, Project Popeye in Vietnam in the 60s, that was so successful at creating precipitation, which certainly they're not doing over Canada right now, are they? Not doing it over Siberia. They could, but they're not. And that's aside from the fact that they have cut off precipitation in many of these regions to set the template for these forests to burn with such ferocity. They control the spigot. The climate engineers control the spigot. We can speculate as to the agendas and objectives being carried out, although we know many of them. And we have data to back that up. Again, wildfires serve geoengineering agenda. But the fact that these programs are going on, contaminating every single drop of rain and controlling where that rain falls, how much and how toxic it will be, that is inarguable. Absolutely inarguable. It's imperative to understand that climate intervention operations are the crown jewel weapon of the military industrial complex. Again, a weapon with which they can bring populations to their knees without those populations ever even knowing they're under assault. And this has been going on for so many decades in so many countries. Moving on, let's look at a new survey from the Pew Research Organization. That's pewresearch.org. Here's the survey headline, Majority of Americans Prioritize Renewable Energy and Back Steps to Address Climate Change. Again, lie by omission. No mention of climate engineering, and most Americans frankly don't want to know. What about the climate science community? How do they respond to a survey on this question? Were they willing to deny, would they be willing to deny climate engineering operations were already deployed on the record? And we know what the result is because geoengineeringwatch.org conducted a survey of 1,500 climate scientists. We published the list of all of these scientists on our site. One question, are you willing to deny climate engineering has already been deployed on the record? How many were willing to deny it? None. Zero. Not one. And yet these same so-called scientists that seem to lack any semblance of virtue, morality, or honor... These same scientists marginalize anyone that dares to point out the elephant in the sky. That climate engineering is obviously ongoing and has been for a very long time. About the so-called renewable energy. Again, for a shocking expose on so-called renewable energy that isn't, search and view the documentary Planet of the Humans. You won't like what you learn. That so-called green energy is anything but. Again, this clarification. Do my last statements mean I somehow am lobbying for carbon fuel or nuclear reactor nightmares? No. All are milestones on the path of near-term self-annihilation for our species. Next headline from this week, unmasking the threat. Scientists show how climate change fuels respiratory infections. That's from newsmedical.net. Respiratory infections are the most common infectious diseases that cause seasonal epidemics and pandemics, the report says. To date, 
the relationship between respiratory infections and climate change is not well understood. Again, that's from medical.net. So their headline states that climate change is fueling these infections, and then they say the relationship between these infections and climate change isn't well understood. Is that a bit of a contradiction there? And again, the complete omission of climate intervention operations that our own precipitation testing, working with the world recognized institution we're not disclosing yet over a single U.S. state, quantifying the amount of particulate matter in rain tests, about 500 of those tests, and extrapolating what the total global dispersions are likely to be over the course of a year, somewhere between 40 and 60 million tons of the most dangerous type of particle, nanoparticles that are exponentially smaller than anything air quality testing even looks for, let alone discloses. And they're not looking for specific types of elements that are part of this mix. Also, the most lethal kind like aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers. It's affecting everything. For those that wonder why the bees are going away so fast, and yes, there's many causes, certainly, and the bees are only one example of insects which are dying from this same factor. Search bees aluminum. Been over this in many broadcasts, but new listeners haven't heard this. Peer-reviewed study proving bees are dying of massive aluminum exposure. They can't even find their way back to the hive. All of this is raining down through the air column. All of us breathing it in with every breath we take. No disclosure anywhere. That's not an accident. The climate engineering card has long since been played. The geoengineering experiment, from which there is no return, was first fully deployed over the polar regions, again, over 75 years ago, without public knowledge or consent. A global experiment from which there is no return. How clear can that be at this point for anyone that's even slightly awake and aware? That the clinically insane controllers of the matrix don't consider the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. On last week's Global Alert News broadcast, I covered a stunning example of this, the to hell with the consequences mentality of the Matrix manipulators, Project Starfish Prime, the detonation of hydrogen bombs in the magnetosphere, the consequences of which are still manifesting today. The predator parasite class had no idea what the Starfish Prime detonations would do. They were told by the science community that the hydrogen bomb detonations in the upper atmosphere could collapse it entirely. Did that stop them? No. Back to the global climate engineering operations, a.k.a. weather and climate warfare. The planetary experiment from which there is no return, not in any time frame that matters. And what's that statement mean? How long is that? Based on previous mass extinction data that weren't nearly as bad as what we face, we're staring down a time scale of tens of millions of years before the planet could recover from what's been done to it by the human race. And that's if all forms of human activity were to stop immediately, including climate engineering. And when I state the human race, I know there are exceptions. I recognize that. And to each and every one of those exceptions, you have my deepest gratitude. I simply want to point out that it's not just those in power. As I've stated so many times, they could not do what they do without the active or passive support of the majority populations. And how many people, even now, are not concerned about anything beyond the next weekend's football game or tailgate party, six-pack of beer and a pizza? How many people are still in that category? I know there's many in third world countries that are simply trying to survive every day. They're trying to look for somewhere they can survive. And these are increasingly climate collapse refugees. I know there's criminals amongst them, but you can't label all of these people that are dragging their children with them, infants, as criminals. That's simply a form of denial about homeless people that are increasing everywhere in every city around the globe. How many of them could be us? And I regularly stop, talk to, and try to help the homeless because I know it could be me on the street. And it's very profound how many of the homeless here in Northern California, in Redding specifically, that are extremely aware of and concerned about climate engineering. While those driving by in their air-conditioned Mercedes Benzes and Lexuses don't care at all. At least not yet. Again, the bottom line is this. The party's over. It's not coming back in any time frame that matters. And the question that remains is this. Can any part of the planet's remaining life support systems be salvaged? And we have very little time to find out. From USA Today, 
That's going to be a problem. That's part of the headline. Summer 2023 is shaping up to be sweltering and smoky. Summer 2023 in the U.S., the report says, has started with deadly heat and dangerous air as heat domes, there it is again, high-pressure heat domes, and wildfire effects plague tens of millions of Americans. The report then says, get used to it. Experts say, as both the heat and the smoke are likely here to stay. That is the scheduled weather. Not just for the U.S., happening in Europe as well. On that note, from aljazeera.com, this. State of emergency declared in Siberia over raging wildfires. The report says authorities in Russia declared a state of emergency. That's this week. As summer wildfires spread amid intense heat and lightning storms. Wildfires have become more intense in Russia in recent years. Helped by unusually high temperatures, high pressure heat domes again there, just like here. Major powers all colluding and cooperating on this. It cannot be otherwise. All for their own agenda. Keep in mind, all those in power absolutely know the planet can no longer support the weight of the human race. That's a mathematical and statistical fact. And for all those people who would want to convince themselves that there's no overpopulation issue, we could all fit in the state of Texas and have some elbow room to spare. It's not about elbow room. It's about resources. And because I acknowledge that fact, Does that mean I somehow agree with what those in power are doing? Of course not. Of course it doesn't. Acknowledging the truth doesn't mean you agree with what the criminal cabal masquerading as governments are doing. It simply means that we are going to hit the wall one way or the other. And of course those in power know this. And of course they're colluding and cooperating on programs like climate engineering. Why wouldn't they? Given what we know about the kind of individual we're dealing with. Report states that These fires are driven by climate change. Again, no mention of climate engineering, the single greatest drought-causing factor of all by far. Please search the engineering drought section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Search the engineering wildfire section and the engineering winter section if you want to know why those massive hailstones fall everywhere there's any storm of any significance now in the U.S. Two-inch hailstones are now the norm. Since when? And no one asks any questions. The 2021 fire season report says was Russia's largest ever with 18.8 million hectares. That's almost 50 million acres. That's 46.5 million acres of forest destroyed. How many Americans had any idea that that much of Earth's last remaining forests were going up in flames in Siberia? Nothing. While we're watching the same circular political circus of idiocy in U.S. matrix media night after night after night, how many Americans are willing to dig a bit deeper? About two times the size of the island of Ireland. That's how much acreage Russia lost in one single year. The smoke from these wildfires reached the North Pole, by the way, and that's part of the plan. Again, search wildfires serve geoengineering agenda. Speaking of the polar regions, how are they doing as a whole? That picture is far beyond bleak. Why does it matter if we lose the ice, many ask? Because that's the air conditioner of the planet. If you're in a parked car in the sun with windows rolled up on a hot day and now with extremely intense UV radiation thanks to the destroyed ozone layer, geoengineering being the core factor in that equation, how long would you live without air conditioning? That's an easy question to answer, not long. And that's the collective dilemma we now face. The planet's air conditioning system, the polar regions, is disintegrating and this is not a linear equation. Now let's add this from theconversation.com. Meltwater is hydrofracking Greenland's ice sheet through millions of hairline cracks, destabilizing its internal structure. This meltwater leaks to what's called a moulon. That's a crack in the ice. And as the water pours in, it damages the ice sheet structure and releases its latent heat. The ice fabric itself warms and softens and hence flows and melts faster and faster, like warmed up candle wax. The stream driven hydrofractures mechanically damage the ice and transfer heat into the core of the ice sheet, destabilizing it from the inside out. Ultimately, the internal fabric and structure integrity of the ice sheets is becoming much more vulnerable. Further, to add to this, warming ocean currents are intruding into the Antarctic and Greenland coastlines flowing under the ice sheets to undercut 
outlet glaciers and destabilize their calving fronts. About the North Pole, no land there. I think most know that, but just in case. It's the rapid loss of land-based ice that is fueling sea level rise, and those that don't believe it's happening, wait and see. Those with coastal properties that think they're safe and sound for some extended time period, guess again. And as that ice slides off the landmass, you get what's called glacial rebound. The landmass begins to rise up out of the ocean, displacing even more water. Ice extent and mass in both polar regions, all-time record lows. In fact, on that front, here's a headline from this week from LifeScience.com. Antarctic sea ice reached record-smashing low last month. It's still there now, but they record month to month. And there's worse issues with the disappearing ice. Existential threats, in fact, from phys.org. Research shows shrinking Arctic glaciers are unearthing a new source of methane. This is in addition to what is known to be in the Arctic tundra and in the Arctic seabed. Search Siberian methane craters for images that will shock you to the core. It looks like a nuclear bomb exchange went off. This is methane thawing and exploding into the atmosphere. Why is that a problem? Been over that many broadcasts. Methane over a 10 year time horizon, 120 times more potent than CO2 as a heat trapping gas. Here's an excerpt from this report on the newly found methane deposits. Quote, scientists are concerned that additional methane emissions released by the Arctic thaw could ramp up human induced global warming. Again, we're back to the same sort of infantile statements from the so-called climate science community. They're about the same as saying if you leap off a 100-story building, you could get hurt. There is enough methane in the Arctic alone to turn this planet into a true sister of Venus. Search geoengineeringwatch.org Venus Syndrome to learn more about that not-so-fun fact. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the Bad News Broadcast, installment number 413, June 8th, 2023. This is Dane Wigginton, your host. Global Alert News, brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. The commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is now on 23 AM and FM stations throughout the country. All recent recordings of this broadcast can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the the recent column. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us to expand our reach and our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. And it is a last hour effort. We are so, so late in the game and so few even now understand that. And that is absolutely by design. Those in power want to keep populations completely asleep at the wheel till the moment of impact. And so far, they've done far too well. That needs to change. On the subject of sounding the alarm, if you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail-outs don't go to the spam files. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. Again, we made that film available for free the moment it was done. Our only goal, to try to turn this tide while we can. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. When viewing our YouTube of the dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. About waking those that still aren't looking up. Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials can be found on our homepage. Our only goal, to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. Being armed with credible data is exponentially more effective than going out into the street, ranting and pointing at the sky. That shuts people down. Pass them something credible. Plant a seed that will sprout. There's very high quality, printed materials, shocking images, a picture's worth a thousand words. We have Geoengineering Watch hoodies and Geoengineering Watch shirts, both with very high quality four color images on both sides. Image of a military tanker descending down over the planet and spraying. A dimming sun is on the background with this caption, stop climate engineering, investigate, and below that geoengineeringwatch.org so they can find a credible source of data to continue their investigation. Scannable business cards, bumper stickers, all effective tools to strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. Waking the masses, so many people ask, what do we do? How do we 
move this fight forward. We must wake the masses. It is the only way forward so that those participating know what they're participating in, so that populations understand what's been done to them by the governments that they thought were there to look after their welfare. Could not be further from the truth. We must reach a critical mass of awareness. It's the only way forward in this fight. And all of us that are already awake and aware are needed in that effort. Time is not on our side. Moving on from Fox News. 115 degree heat bakes desert southwest through midweek as northwest heats up. This report states excessive heat warnings remain in effect across southeastern California into western and southern Arizona as highs are expected to climb well over 110 degrees. Phoenix is expected to see high temperatures of over 112 for at least the next seven days. What don't they tell you in a report like this? That the nights are not cooling off. Nighttime so-called low temperatures are rising twice as fast as daytime highs. Why would that be? Because the heat is being trapped in the atmosphere, not just from greenhouse gases like CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide, but also from climate engineering operations that trap more heat than they deflect. All of this is compounding to create a warming, a thermal energy buildup on the planet right now that's equivalent to the heat contained in seven Hiroshima bombs per second. That's how fast the heat's building up. Much of that going into the oceans. Oceans are superheating and dying, deoxygenating. Our fisheries are collapsing. This is a cascading collapse scenario on planet Earth. It's happening now. This report continues in the Northwest. Heat advisories have also been issued for portions of Northern California, Western Oregon, including Portland metro areas. Let's remember the heat dome that was placed over British Columbia in 2021, pushing those temperatures on coastal British Columbia to over 121 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 60 degrees above normal. Yes, the planet's superheating from many causes, but that kind of intense heat in one location is caused by a high-pressure heat dome, an ionosphere heater-induced high-pressure heat dome, 60 degrees above normal. So that means, again, a place like Redding, California, right now in July, that would be like 160 degrees here. That's how completely off the rails that kind of heat was in British Columbia, and that is not nature. It's not nature. From MSN.com, in India, it's getting too hot to farm. The heat waves are pushing farm workers to the edge of survival. The extreme heat will keep getting worse. It's not just about that it being too hot for them to farm. Photosynthesis stops at 104 degrees. It tapers down up to that point, but it stops at 104 degrees. There's also the contaminants in the rain that are sterilizing soil, soil microbiome, the intense UV radiation. We're seeing crop production crash all over the world. And yes, we hear from some gardeners that have a greenhouse and augmented soils and they think everything's fine. It's not fine. It's not fine. You can't provide food for 8 billion people with very manipulated greenhouses, manipulated conditions that can't be conducted on any significant scale that would even begin to feed 8 billion people. Next headline, multiple sources, corn belt drought worsens as dry pattern remains. Again, the climate engineers control the spigot. That is a given. Although... That notion of control is waning as the planet's climate system completely unravels. Next headline from the New York Times, rice. Half the planet eats it. Climate change is wrecking it. Again, lie by omission. No mention of climate engineering. The contamination of climate engineering is affecting root systems, soil microbiome, ozone layer, atmospheric relative humidity. All of this, a part of the equation that no official source or no matrix media source is acknowledging. From phys.org, genetically modified crops may be a solution to hunger. Why there is skepticism in Africa? Why wouldn't there be skepticism when genetically modified organisms that may grow twice as fast and that are engineered to grow with aluminum that's now bioavailable? We have aluminum resistant seeds. Thank you, Bill Gates, for that. GMO crops that grow twice as fast, have half the nutrition, so they're actually worse for you than having half the calories with more nutrition. How effective is that? Just having a full belly doesn't make you healthy. You can eat a plate of cardboard and perhaps you won't be hungry anymore. Will you be healthy? I think not. From BBC, UK weather, hottest June since record keeping began. That's from the Met office there. Researchers have been predicting patterns where weather appears to get, quote, stuck, which would mean longer heat waves. This is exactly like the, quote, ridiculously resilient ridge parked over California for so many years until this season when they allowed some toxic rain to fall. 
ridiculously resilient ridge of high pressure, as the meteorologist termed it, which consistently blocked rain from California. In fact, a reminder, the winter season of late 2021 and 2022, my location, Northern California, east side of Lake Shasta, typically 70 inches of rain in a normal year. We got nothing from late December till early April, nothing. Not a drop. How quickly people forget that. Also from BBC, hottest June kills fish in UK and threatens insects. Insects aren't really just threatened when there's an 80 to 90% decline. Would we call that just being threatened? No, I think not. Collapse is the proper term in that case. From Sixton.com, how a week of extreme weather sowed chaos in central China. Again, deluge in Henan province destroyed crops and sparked a frenzied rescue mission. Flash floods, flash droughts, other parts of the year, flash freezes, flash massive hailstorms, all wiping out agricultural regions in countries all over the world. We see none of this on U.S. media. In fact, as I've stated before, Chinese media is much better at covering these events than U.S. media. How disturbing is that? This report from China continues. Some farmers have been wiped out. The crisis has exposed how vulnerable Chinese agriculture remains to the effects of climate change, a.k.a. weather warfare. There, here, Russia, and everywhere in between. The rain that fell on some agricultural locations was incredibly fine, this report says, like flour, meaning it lingered on the ears of wheat for hours, causing seeds to germinate within days with disastrous results. Over 90% of the grains sprouted too early. How often we see that also in Northern California, this incredibly measured, constant, misty drip Aircraft can be here flying over. This is when they're chemically nucleating to cause a surface cool down, typically not natural at all. How few notice. Here's a statement from a Chinese farmer. Why is it like this? Question mark. Why is our weather behaving this way? Question mark. That's right from this report. At least they're asking questions in China. From Vox.com, yes, it's hot, but this could be one of the coolest summers of the rest of your life. This report says heat waves like those in Texas and Europe are likely to get worse on the whole, not better. Not likely to. There is no other possible outcome here, short of some form of intervention that is of yet unseen or what some in high circles of power are now talking about, using nuclear bombs to put enough particulate matter in the atmosphere to provide temporary cooling. If they do that, game over. Ionizing radiation will strip away the layers of the atmosphere. We're done. That's simple. From Al Jazeera, scientists warn of crop failure uncertainties as Earth heats up. Increasing concentrations of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere is putting the planet in uncharted territory as weather extremes intensify. Again, no mention of climate engineering. All of these media sources inevitably controlled by those who print the money. They control the narrative. Next headline, why does wildfire smoke sometimes smell like burning plastic? Here's... The explanation, the so-called science explanation from this headline. When trees, branches, and leaves are burned in wildfires, they emit gases. Some of the molecules in these gases might be causing the smell, an expert said. Oh, there you have it. I feel so much better because a matrix-trained expert says so. I have something to say about the experts in a moment. A few headlines first. From AccuWeather. Dot com. Unhealthy air quality levels across U.S. persist in summer of smoke and haze. Reports says, I do believe this will go down as the summer of smoke and haze for much of Canada and large portions of northern U.S., according to AccuWeather senior meteorologist Brett Anderson. He said there are just way too many massive fires burning throughout Canada, which will likely keep burning until the first snows during the fall season. He is simply reading a script of the scheduled weather, passed down ultimately from Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, private defense contractors that are neck deep in climate engineering operations. And they do the modeling for the nation's weathermen that have an official illegal gag order on them. And a final note about the air quality. Again, it's far worse than anything we're being told because the most dangerous particles of all, nanoparticles, climate engineering nanoparticles of highly toxic elements are not being disclosed. And they are there. Our lab tests prove they're there. Let's move on. Here's a message this week from Congressman Doug LaMalfa in Northern California, whom I know and have had numerous meetings with 
and who refuses to even investigate the subject of climate engineering, no matter how much verifiable data he is given, even from California EPA, which I have handed to him personally, he will not look at it. Here's his message. Celebrating our nation's 247th year of independence. Congressman Lamal for then states, overgrown debris filled unhealthy forests are ticking time bombs that are one spark away from incineration. Until we implement aggressive forest management policies on federal lands, LaMalfa says, the threat of wildfire will continue to hang over us. He finishes with this, it looks like nature is making sure Congress sees what happens when we don't manage our forest lands. Yes, Mr. LaMalfa, blame it all on nature as you're paid to do by those you answer to. For the record, Mr. LaMalfa, regions of Remote Siberia that have never been touched by human anything have had their burn rates increase 1,000%, 10 times worse in the last decade. Why? What has changed? And I have done forest management on a very large scale on the Habitat Preserve. I manage working with state and federal agencies, and that is not the reason these forests are burning. When you cut off the precipitation, sometimes all winter long, when the rain that falls is toxic, killing root systems, soil microbiome, when we have UV radiation frying the trees from the top down, and then the beetles move in and kill everything else, which official agencies blame everything on the beetles. So much deception happening here, and Mr. LaMalfa's idea of a fire-safe forest is you just remove the forest. I wonder why the logging industry supports Mr. LaMalfa. What do you think? Please search this title if you want to see a, quote, managed forest in the definition of Mr. LaMalfa. Search climate engineering, clear-cutting, and record wildfires. Climate engineering, clear-cutting, and record wildfires. Watch the video in that report, and you can see a, quote, managed forest. Here's a few fast final headlines from theatlantic.com. Summer in the South is becoming unbearable. From multiple sources off the charts, Earth's vital signs are going haywire. From thehill.com, climate crisis, it's time for more drastic solutions. What do they mean? Climate engineering, of course. Pretending hasn't been going on for 75 years already. Next, from CNN, sea animals suffer as 200-mile toxic algae bloom spreads. From phys.org, California beachgoers face unexpected peril, aggressive biting sea lions. They're starving to death, dying. Maybe they know what's responsible for that, the behavior of so many in the human race. We've destroyed their world. Ocean life, including the fisheries that fed billions across the globe, are completely collapsing. Another headline, dead fish wash up on riverbank and drought hit Iraq. Question, how many continue to tell themselves that if there are those disaster capitalists that are making money off the climate collapse, it must not be real? Does that narrative hold water? No. How many have made money off both sides of wars? Did that mean the war never happened and people never died? No, didn't mean that. The climate collapse is far more than real, and that will manifest every single day from here on out. So here we are, all of us, passengers on a rapidly sinking ship, Earth. First question, is more so-called science going to save us from ourselves? Next, are we better off because of science? Is the world better off because of science? Has science provided meaning in the lives of the majority or bit by bit taken it away and soon enough leaving us all with virtually nothing left to salvage of the once thriving world that allowed us to exist in the first place? The word scientific has carried with it an almost unassailable aura of credibility. The deification of science, trust the experts, we're told. We live in an era of the false deification of science. When the so-called experts tell us that we aren't actually seeing climate engineering jets spraying toxic filth in disguise all over the world, and those that question the official narrative are ridiculed and marginalized by the faithful followers of the power structure bought and paid for so-called scientists. How is this different from the certainty of religious zealots? In the 20th century, the meaning of the word science took on almost the equivalent of the meaning of the word holy. Anything that was scientific had to be good and true by definition. Anything labeled unscientific was suspect at best, and probably, we're officially told, the result of ignorance at best or nefarious intentions at worst. Real science should be, must be, the search for truth wherever that evidence leads. Stop, pause, consider, and remember, the hallmark of a healthy mind is an unyielding willingness to face the truth, no matter how dire or disturbing. 
Yes, we can still make a difference even at this late hour. How can the story end well? By knowing at our core that we're doing everything in our power to find and remain on the correct compass heading, one that protects and preserves the only possessions that any of us can truly call our own, virtue, morality, honor, and courage. Because without courage, none of the other virtues are possible. The biggest and most important initial leap we can collectively make in the right direction is to fully expose and halt the ongoing and accelerating climate intervention weather warfare operations. The greatest single human assault on life, not just our own lives, but the entire web of life on which all of our lives also completely depend. Everything that we hold dear is in the near-term balance. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific instructions on how you can help to move this fight forward. Please, make your voice heard, make every day count. The sand in the hourglass is running down at blinding speed. Until next week, stay strong. Never yield to the insanity that surrounds us, ever. This is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org. <laughs>